Hello everyone, this is Dr. Elias from the Department of Education, Hazara University, Mansera. What is research gap? Why do we need to identify a research gap? And how do we actually find research gap in research studies? These are some of the questions that are on the minds of research students. And these are also some of the questions that are asked uh, by the research committees, um, especially committees at the proposal stage. And also during the VIVA, such questions are asked. So this brief presentation is about um, answering these three questions related to research gap. So let us begin first with the first question. Research gap, or, or what is actually research gap? So there are some central questions um, that we need to ask in order to understand what research gap is. So the first question in that list is, what is the need to conduct this study? If we actually try to answer this question, this will, this will actually, in a way, be answering the question of what is the research gap. The second question is, what is lacking in the existing literature regarding the topic or the issue that needs to be identified or explored? So, um, there is generally literature available related to research topics that are being explored. What is it that the, the present literature is actually deficient in that, that, needs to, uh, that needs further exploration? And so this also is a question that will um, be in response to the research gap question. And then the third question is, what we do not know about an issue that we need to know um, to have a better understanding. So you might have, as a researcher, some understanding of the research topic, or there might be a general understanding about certain aspects of the research topic that you are exploring. But there might be some other aspects of the issue that you are exploring that uh, you as a researcher think needs, uh, needs to be uh, further explored so that we can have a better understanding of the research topic. So keeping in view these three central questions, um, we could define a research gap as something that indicates an unexplored, less explored, or inadequate or partially explored area of knowledge. So an exploration or further exploration of which may aid to scholarship, um, general scholarship or contextual scholarship in the field or in the area in which you are actually conducting this research. Uh, so this gap of scholarship might be general or it might be contextual that that will actually de uh, uh, these things actually depends on the field of research or the type of research um, that are being conducted. So for example, in social sciences, um, in more qualitative researches with inductive ap approaches, now, the gap might be more contextual, but in the more quantitative type of researches, the gap that we identi identify might be general, and that actually means that might be a gap relevant to or related to the development of a general theory related to the particular issue that we are exploring. Now, we move on to the why question. Um, in other words, why is it that we need to identify a research gap in a research study? Um, well, 
why would one undertake any research if there is no research gap or if there is no gap of knowledge the second why the second part of the why is why would we reinvent the wheel um, so an issue that has already been explored and there is no need for further exploration uh, generally there is no such such issue in social sciences where there is no further need for exploration but research actually is about clearly identifying the gap and actually describing the gap um, in the research proposal or in the research uh, thesis and that's why these three central questions again are very important in order to answer the why of the research gap so we can define the research gap identification as an is an essential aspect uh, of the research process because we need to rationalize and justify the process and product of the research study so why are we conducting this particular research study what will we get at the end and why is that important so why is it important to undertake a study in a particular way or following a particular research design? And also, why is it important in terms of the product that we get or in terms of what we actually get towards the end of it? So both of these, these questions are very important. And that is why the why of research gap or the rationale for identifying identifying a research gap is important and so uh, we now move on to the how of the research gap and that actually means how do we know that there is a research gap to fill how will we come to know that we actually have a research gap um, in our knowledge or we have a knowledge gap um, or we have limited uh, knowledge or inadequate knowledge related to a particular field that needs to be filled. Secondly, what are sources of identifying research gaps? So how do we actually, what are the ways or what are the sources that help us in identifying the research gap? These are the central questions related to the how of the research gap. Now. There are a number of uh, sources and a number of ways in which we can actually respond to the how of the research gap or how actually to identify the research gap. The first one is personal experiences. Um, generally researchers, student researchers or professional researchers have previous experiences. Those experiences might be related to their academic fields or their professional fields or maybe their personal lives and then reflecting on those experiences this is one of the main sources of identifying research gaps so for example um, if i give an example of um, a possible person uh, a possible gap based on personal experiences and reflections from the field of education. So an educational researcher might, might think of his or her personal experiences as a student um, at the school level or at the college level or at the university level. And the researcher might have um, certain questions related to those experiences. For example, the role of the teacher or the place of the student or the student-teacher relationship um, that he or she experienced at the school or college level. So those could actually be a starting point for uh, thinking about some research issue or topic. Then, um, but those are the initial, uh, the, the beginning of, the, of finding the research gap that can then further be strengthened by reading around questions based on those personal experiences um, 
And so this is actually, this will kind of strengthen and elaborate on the, uh, on the research gaps or issues that, that one can have through personal experiences and, and reflections. The reading will might then, reading uh, parts of previous studies, that actually means that there are certain parts of previous studies or studies that, are, that have been conducted um, in the area or on the topic that you are actually, as a researcher, you want to conduct further research on. One of the interesting areas and useful areas or parts of research reports um, is actually the part where the studies include suggestions for further studies. So in many research theses or research reports or um, in uh, actually in research papers, the researchers have um, given suggestions for further research. And those can actually help researchers in identifying gaps for further exploration. Um, similarly, the research questions uh, that have been explored and so what further questions can, can be explored related to those uh, particular research questions. The conditions under which uh, previous studies have been conducted. So what other conditions could those particular topics be uh, studied, uh, studied under um, what different conditions? So there might be different conditions under which certain uh, variables or certain issues could be explored. And similarly, methodological considerations. So there might be certain topics that have been explored using one methodological, uh, uh, one methodologies um, or another methodology. So the researcher can, for example, <clears throat> Um, a topic might have been explored through qualitative research methodologies. Um, that could further be explored using mixed method research designs or quantitative research designs when we are, we are actually talking about social sciences. Similarly, another very <clears throat> important source uh, of finding gaps or finding research gaps is reading the meta-analyses in the form of research papers or, or books that have identified, that have critically analyzed uh, previous studies and issues. And so they have actually identified uh, further uh, research gaps or research gaps or further studies. Popular topics on journal websites. Um, so journal websites or there could be other publishing company websites where there might be certain popular topics and so the researcher the the the, the student researchers or junior researchers could think about why those topics are popular in what contexts have those topics been explored or how those topics have been explored and so what could be some areas that of those particular popular topics uh, that could be further explored. So this is also one way of identifying gaps. Um, now towards the end of this uh, presentation, um, another very important source of how to actually find research gaps is discussion with your research supervisors or with senior colleagues. The research supervisors have experience, have vast, generally vast experience related to the field that the student researchers are interested in. And so they can be quite helpful. Similarly, senior colleagues, senior research students could also help in um, identifying or in actually polishing research uh, gap areas. Um, so asking them questions and discussions with them could be very helpful in this regard. Then observing what other senior research students have been working on. This is also, especially for regular students, uh, research students, uh, this is a, a very important way of actually finding and thinking about areas that are important 
or areas that senior research students have been exploring. So there might be certain aspects that they have been working on and so you could think of other aspects of those particular topics that they have already been exploring. Um, and another very important source of finding gaps is attending research conferences in the field of your interest. Uh, for example, if I give my own example, I remember in 2009 when I was working on my proposal for, uh, for conducting my PhD study on the topic of reflection, reflective practices. Um, I went to a conference in 2009 and that conference was held in Birmingham, UK. And a number of people um, had come to present their papers on the very topic that I was actually con um, thinking about conducting my PhD research on. And discussions there, presentations there in that particular conference were very useful in actually specifying my topic and, and, and refining my research questions and objectives. So attending research conferences in the field of your interest might be very useful uh, for actually uh, identifying and, and polishing and refining your research gap. And the last one is actually not about how, but actually about when. So when should you start beginning the process of identifying research gap as a research student? Well, the earlier, the better. Um, generally, there are, um, there are uh, in the beginning, students uh, go through um, uh, actually studying courses related to research methodology and uh, related to the subjects that they are conducting their research in. So, like if you have in the beginning of the semesters or in the beginning uh, of the, the very beginning of the research process, you start thinking about possible research gaps and if you have got a, a supervisor, if you discuss with those supervisors, the earlier you start this process of identifying research gap, the better it is for actually developing a very good research proposal and identifying a very useful, doable and practical research gap. So thank you very much for your time and attention. If you have questions, please share those questions in the comment section. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.